Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. I want to give a shout out to those of you that have sent in PayPal donations and bought me cups of coffee or joined me on Patreon. God bless you. You are a blessing to me. Thank you very much. A big blessing. As you know, I'm I'm shadow banned on YouTube and at the end of every month, the beginning of every month, I, I noticed this week um, subscriber numbers have dropped. YouTube often unsubscribes people from their favorite channels. So you might want to jump on over and make sure you're still subscribed to my channel. Recently, my daughter was telling me that there was a fellow that she worked with who had scurvy. Hard to believe that in this day and age here in the United States, someone would develop scurvy. Well, evidently, 7.1% um, of people here in the U.S. have scurvy and they may not even know it. They might be in the early stages of it. This fellow admitted that basically his diet was nothing but ramen noodles, nothing else. He loved ramen noodles. And he worked at a super Walmart store, which had a very large grocery department. Unbelievable. Many probably don't even know what scurvy is. It's a disease that is affected by the lack of vitamin C in your diet. A ascorbic acid deficiency. The country with the highest number of people who develop scurvy is in northern India. 73.9%. You can prevent scurvy by getting the recommended daily allowance of vitamin C in your diet. The best source of the nutrient are fresh fruits and vegetables. A good source of vitamin C includes citrus fruits, tomatoes, potatoes, broccoli, strawberries, and sweet peppers. For those of us in the prepper community, yeah, bottles of vitamin C is highly recommended to add to your supplies. The human body can store about 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C and clinical characteristics of deficiency materialize after that level is decreased to less than 350 milligrams. Surprisingly, symptoms of scurvy may appear or develop after only 8 to 12 weeks. Thinking about all the fast foods that people generally get nowadays, yeah, how susceptible are they to scurvy? Makes you wonder. The first symptoms of scurvy include general weakness, fatigue, irritability, and joint pain. If left untreated, more severe symptoms may develop, and they include anemia, swollen, bleeding gums that may become purple or spongy, gingivitis, loose teeth. Yeah, your teeth might fall out. Bleeding under your skin, you may develop a scurvy rash that shows up as red or blue spots on your skin. Maybe your skin bruises easily or you have rough scaly skin, um, swollen legs, wounds, injuries that don't seem to heal, dry, brittle hair that coils like a corkscrew. In babies and children, symptoms of scurry may include irritability, pain when they move, no appetite, failure to gain weight, anemia. Cooking also destroys some of the vitamin C found in food. Certain conditions increase your body's vitamin C requirement. You will need more vitamin C and risk deficiency if you don't get enough while experiencing things like pregnancy, if you're breastfeeding. Uh, maybe you've been sick, um, you have high fevers, an overactive thyroid, or maybe you have chronic diarrhea, even if you recently had surgery or have burns. And people who use tobacco need a higher amount of vitamin C. So how is scurvy treated? Well, it's simple. You just consume more vitamin C. You should try to maintain a nutritious diet that includes one to two times the daily requirement amount of vitamin C. Most people feel better within 48 hours after increasing their vitamin C and many make a full recovery within two weeks. Some symptoms may take longer to fully clear up depending on the cause of your condition. 
So how much vitamin C do you need every day? Well, from birth to maybe six months old, they recommend about 40 milligrams. Infants ages seven to 12 months old, 50 milligrams. Children one to three years old, uh, 15 milligram. Yeah, I was surprised that it dropped after about one year. Um, children, like I said, one to three years old need 15 milligrams. Children from four to eight years old, 25 milligrams. If they're 9 to 13 years old, they need 45 milligrams. Now for teenagers, boys ages 14 to 18 years old, they would need 75 milligrams. Females would need 65 milligrams. Adult males 19 years and older, 90 milligrams. Females also 19 years and older, 75 milligrams. Pregnant teenagers, 80 milligrams. Pregnant adults, 85 milligrams. If you're breastfeeding, you should get 115 milligrams a day. Whereas adults that are breastfeeding, chest feeding, 120 milligrams a day. You cannot get too much vitamin C. Your body will use what it needs and then flush it out with your urine. Now, if you smoke, you should add 35 milligrams um, of extra vitamin C to your diet. Yeah, it's easy to add vitamin C to your supplies, to your prepper supplies. It's easy to take one vitamin C every day. Yeah, I was shocked to hear about the man that worked there at Walmart who had an adequate supply of food. He worked there. <laughs> um, they have a grocery department. To have scurvy. Unbelievable. 7.1% of those here in the United States have scurvy. How many don't even realize they have it? Scurvy doesn't always have symptoms. I was reading an article about a six-year-old boy who had a history of inability to walk. The onset was gradual and the problem progressed slowly until the patient became bedridden. Dietary history was significant in that he was drinking only milk during the last three years. But he was often irritable. There was no rashes, no gingivitis bleeding. The motion for his upper limbs, his arms, were normal. Respiratory uh, was normal. His vitamin D intake was normal. His thyroid was normal. The only thing was that his legs, the development of the inability to walk. Within 10 days of giving him high doses of vitamin C, he was back on his legs and walking, but he did continue for three months. A follow-up medical examination found that his levels were back to normal, and his parents then were educated regarding the proper diet that they should start following with a well-balanced meals. Scurvy has been known to exist for more than 300 years. Ancient Egyptians talked about it. It was a major cause of, of morbidity and mortality in much of Europe during the Great Potato Famine and the United States Civil War. Captain James Cook was one of the first to determine that sailors who spent months at sea could avoid scurvy by maintaining a diet rich in vegetables. I thought it was interesting that one of the other symptoms would, would be mood changes and depression or pain from moving your hips and knees. Here in the United States, it's still present in certain populations. Uh, those with poor nutrition, including elderly people living alone or those living in poverty, people who are alcoholics or with psychiatric issues. You know, they don't eat enough uh, fruits and vegetables. Yeah, so add vitamin C to that diet. What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.